antenna. I've been watching a, a lecture series on electroculture, which is basically utilizing the Earth's native magnetism as well as um, native energies that are always, you know, all around us in our atmosphere. There's this this guy, he's in, I believe he's in Belgium. His name is Yannick Van Dorn. Anyway, he's got a really good series on principles of electroculture that I've been watching. It's like 10 hours. And he talks about a lot of different techniques and ideas, but one of the things that he talks about is, is building antennas like these. So we've got all of this wire that's still hung up in the barn. Um, so I'm just right now I'm just harvesting the the wire that was that was in there. I'm gonna save this one in the lectures. Yannick was saying that you don't necessarily have to take the plastic off like I did with these wires um, and that he has found and others he's worked with have found that the color of the plastic actually seems to have an effect on the plants and he said that Red, for instance, red coated wire um, seems to encourage plants to bloom and to fruit more. So yeah, I'm gonna save the red and test that theory out. I'm also tired of stripping this plastic off. It's a real pain in the ass. So probably save this for later, but I'll keep the red. Another one he said was, um, he said blue. Blue is, blue is really good for vegetative growth. So if you're trying to get a plant to like leaf out or, you know, grow a bunch of like mass in a year the blue would be a good color to save so to my mind and how i understand it is electroculture is using like native energies to harmonize like with the earth's atmosphere and the earth's magnetism both um, so you you know build these antennas or build these other different structures or there's a lot of techniques in within electroculture you can do but basic idea is to 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 harmonize you know the ground you're working and it makes plants grow better they also say that it you know makes animals even grow better you can attach an antenna to your chicken coop and they say that your chickens will lay more eggs you can attach electroculture devices to like water to bodies of water to you know structure the water or make it make it what no one knows what structured water is Basically, you can attach it to water to, to keep the water healthy, make the water healthier. The video I was watching last night, he was saying that uh, like rain tanks with the antennas on them, they take longer to like go, go stagnant and get nasty. A few months ago, like it was middle of winter, was, I think it was maybe January, De December, um, I built a tiny little antenna for Anna Rosa's Monstera um, in our room. Ever since then, like even though it was like the middle of winter, and we moved it to an even darker part of the room because of the cats. It seems like that monstera has just like exploded. And I mean, we have no way to like scientifically verify that it was because of the little antenna that I built. But I think this antenna will go in the garden and then I want to build one. I actually already put some stuff in with the rabbits. You did? Yeah. I built a, a Lakovsky coil in there. And then there's also a Ignea spiral. But uh, for those, um, I put those in with the rabbits because we let Emilio go a few days ago um, to try and try and start getting these bunnies bred, and he still hasn't been successful yet. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm actually like sort of low-key hoping that having the the uh, antennas in there sort of helps them all, you know, settle down and get copacetic. Yeah, yeah. What you got there? So this is a, a spiral and I'm gonna attempt to make it more, more like conical, mm -hmm. like wider in the middle and narrower. Let's see if I can do it. Why didn't you find something conical to wrap it around? Do we have anything conical? A traffic cone is over there. Is that too big? Yeah, that'd be, I mean, there, there's no hard and fast rules, really. Um, in the lecture I was watching, he was talking about how it would it would be a lot better if 
there was some more robust research done on like the dimensions of mm. things. He bases his work a lot on royal cubits, which I've been meaning to like look up and learn more about. But it's kind of like, I'm just guessing, but it's kind of like um, similar to like a golden ratio in nature. I'm kind of just freestyling with this one because it's the first one I've made and I just want to sort of feel out, you know, what I need and what I would change in the future sort of thing. It's a prototype. Yeah. So it's sort of getting there. Mm -hmm. You laughing at me? Mm -hmm. And you know, I didn't even check. <laughs> is so, it going the wrong way so no it's not i would rather it be going clockwise but it's definitely going counterclockwise let's just redo it <laughs> <laughs> so you don't it doesn't have to it doesn't have to go clockwise actually and he said it's it's even better to have two mm. to have one going clockwise and one going counterclockwise Because when when you spiral something, like when we plant a plant and we spiral mm -hmm. and I, you go clockwise, mm -hmm. the plant, from the plant's perspective, that's actually counterclockwise. Does that make sense? So it's not the end of the world. Anyway, I'm going to do it. It's going the other way. You didn't explain why you're using copper. Um, that is a good question. So you don't actually don't have to use copper, which is contrary to what a lot of people think. So a lot of the different sort of pioneers in electroculture who all more or less sort of developed their own techniques independently. I mean, there was a little bit of crossover. Like it seems like a lot of these guys came from France and from like French speaking countries. The one guy, Luigi. Luigi. Luigi Ignea, who did the, the Ignea spirals, which is actually what I'm making right now. Mm. Um, he did all of his work using, it might've been aluminum. If it wasn't aluminum, then it was just like steel, which people were like, oh, they don't use those, you know, those kinds of metals are toxic and bad for soil and bad for life kind of especially aluminum copper is definitely like the favorite but from what i have seen you don't necessarily have to use copper i mean it's like pretty expensive these days but and i won't get into it copper does just objectively have very special you know electromagnetic qualities like it's why we use copper so much like in wiring other metals you can use are zinc and aluminum. Um, steel is okay. Steel is okay, especially as like when you use it in your bases. So like we might use a T-post as our base for our antenna here. I haven't decided yet. What else? Oh, and then yeah, duh, you can use, you can use like silver and gold, but obviously that's like pretty prohibitively expensive. Platinum, titanium. Sure, yeah, whatever you want. And is again is is actually a, another area that you know another question that needs more research but yannick is talking about how it kind of seems like copper just has the broadest most generalized general and global like just worldwide benefits you know when you are are making devices like this but there's a lot there's a lot of um room to experiment with other materials for like other locations and also for like other plants you know so like some plants respond differently to different metals that you use looks pretty wild <laughs> yeah, <it does. laughs> so i just put all the straight ones together like i was making a broom and I wrapped them and then I took this middle coil or middle spiral I should say and I shoved it in there and then I wrapped that so the whole thing is 
wound pretty tight. And I don't know, I kind of like how like these one will just like kind of float around, you know. Like they'll find whatever frequency they're looking for or something. Mm. She just uses a tie. Yeah, but I don't like doing that. Clockwise. So I could just go straight down into the dirt. That'd be fine, but <sighs> sort of layers effect, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's actually not um, the antenna, it's kind of misleading almost, but the antenna is not collecting energy and putting it in the ground. It's actually collecting energy from the ground and putting it into the atmosphere. Um, And there's two, there's two explanations that may or may not be true that um, I like. The first is Yannick Van Doren's explanation is that it's sort of, it almost, um, yeah, so I'm just pressing the wire into the ground. And this too, like there are diagrams and stuff. Like you could take this wire and like you could run it the whole length of a bed or like you could take it and surround your garden or you could like create grids for all your beds. Um, I don't want to do that just yet. Um, anyway, so his explanation is that these antennas, they sort of, they, duplicate the effect that the tree has on, on the atmosphere. So the trees, they also act as antennas. Hmm. And what they do is they bring up um, like the negative charge, the negative ions from the earth. And so they create a field like in the space around them. Mm -hmm. And so you have to imagine that, and excuse me for using metric, but for every meter up in the air, Mm -hmm. there's more um, solar uh, electromagnetic energy flowing in the atmosphere. So for every meter, it's like 100 volts, right, that you go up, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and the higher that energy, like the more stressful and oxidizing it is to plants, right? Um, so by creating an antenna or by being near a tree, there's this umbrella effect where that one meter gets extended like all the way to the top of the antenna um, and so that's like an ideal range for plants to grow and it's like the least oxidizing and the least stressful electromagnetically um, so that's kind of how he put it and then this other video that I watched about it like I, I don't really understand the mechanics so much of this one but the guy said that it basically tricks your plants into thinking that a thunderstorm is coming Again, because it because it changes the the electromagnetic frequencies that your plants are sensing, like in their immediate atmosphere, it mimics what happens when like thunderstorms are rolling in, and we all know that like you know when it rains, plants grow like crazy, right? It's because they like they open up all their pores and they're like accepting all of the water and all of the nutrients and all of the energy and whatever. So by putting one of these in. Again, you, you, you are tricking your plants to believe that there's just like always a thunderstorm happening. Um, so I don't know. That was another one that I found kind of, kind of interesting. But anyway, so this pole is probably like four feet. And what I've heard, what's been said or suggested is that like 
one and a half times the height of the antenna is going to be the effect of the antenna. So I chose a short pole on purpose then so that maybe this growing season we'll see like, okay, so this whole diameter around the antenna, like we notice that things are growing differently, like growing more robustly. Whereas on the far side of the garden, or closer to the greenhouse, whatever, um, things aren't doing so well. I don't know. Pretty, uh, pretty subjective and air quotes, unscientific and whatever, but whatever. If nothing else, it's a pretty garden ornament. But <laughs> <laughs> and something to talk about when people come visit. Thank you.